Hey, welcome everyone. I'm just starting five minutes early uh, just to get a few things set up here. Uh, while we're waiting, um, why don't you say your name and where you're from today? Uh, be good. You can use the chat on the right hand side at any time just to say hello. Uh, I can already see that Paul said hello and Malcolm said hello from uh, cool sunny Devon. So yeah, please just use that chat to um, tell me your name, where you're from. Uh, we'll we'll get started with the lesson really soon. Hopefully you're ready for the webinar. Uh, I know that this has kind of come out of nowhere. Uh, it's kind of uh, it's been the same to me too. Um, it has come out of nowhere, and I've but I just really wanted to do this live. Uh, so. I can't wait to share the song with you and I hope you're excited to learn it and also learn about OpenSea tuning as well, which does sound so fantastic. Hey, Martina from Germany. Nice to have you with us today. So we'll be starting in just two or three minutes. So do make sure that you've got your guitar with you so you can enjoy this song. Hey, Isabel. Good to have you here as well. And hello, Karina as well from Surrey. It's great. We'll be getting started really soon. So are you ready for the webinar? Please say yes if you are. And perhaps just share in the chat as well what songs you're learning at the moment, what bits and pieces you're playing and how your playing's going. Hello, Paul from Midwest USA. Hello, Annette, Dion. Hello, Keith from Shropshire. Hope you're excited to learn this, this song that kind of uh, well, I'll tell a little bit about the story when we get into the webinar, but um, sharing it with you, that's something that I just figured I've got to do that. <laughs> so hopefully we can get into that soon. I'm just going to wait another couple of minutes and then we'll get started. OK. Hello, Frank. Hi, Lizzie as well. Good to see you. And Martina's working on Autumn Leaves by Eva Cassidy. Great song. Hello, Brian from Hampshire. Yeah, so feel free to let me know what songs you're playing right now. What your um, what your latest project is. And we will be starting the webinar very soon. Okay, Karina, you just want to sort of see how the webinar thing works out. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy it. Hello, Timothy from Wimborne. Hello, Jilly as well. Hello, Ken. Okay, let's see if we can get this started. <clears throat> Okay, hey, so welcome. Hello. Uh, apologies for the lockdown haircut. Uh, it's still difficult to find a barber <laughs> here in the UK, at least, but they're opening up soon. Um, nice to, for you to join me here at such last minute. Uh, and we're going to be learning this fantastic song called The Sun Has No Judgment, which is in um, an alternate 
tuning. So normally our strings are tuned to EADGBE and we're going to be changing the tuning, which I'm going to show you how to do. And then we're going to get into how to play this quite I mean, I, I would call it simple. It's kind of beginner-ish friendly, I would say. At least the beginning is. Uh, it then gets a little more challenging as you go through. So it will it will test you a touch. But just to learn about open tunings, and I'm, I'm going to be the open C open tuning, then I'm going to be showing you a few chord shapes that you can use with that open tuning, and you could start perhaps even writing your own songs using it. Um, so I'm just going to double check that everybody has got the tab. So I'm going to put the tab available right now. Um, I've put that um, to be shared so you can download it if you haven't got it already. Do make sure you have got it. It's um, going to be an important part of this. So I'll also just show you what my tab. This is what the tab looks like. This is what we'll be referencing from as we go through. Um, so do make sure you've got that. I'll be taking you through what this means here, this little uh, section and what that means to do. Um, and also the MP3 will be available at the um, end of this webinar. OK, so that way you can you have the MP3, you can put it on your device and you can play it to play along with me. Or if you've got the relevant software, you can slow down the MP3 and use it as a practice tool. OK, um, so that's coming up. Um, so the only other thing really I want to tell you is just remove any distractions, put your phone on silent. If you're watching this on a computer, maybe close down those windows. Just spending a little bit of time with the guitar and learning music is just so um, therapeutic and it just helps take us into another world and just, I mean, for me at least, I just feel kind of very relaxed and at one. So just make sure you're you're listening thoroughly to, to what we're doing here today, making the most out of how it's gone from my memory now, but Glitter and Gold, it's basically in my Beyond Fingerstyle Freedom course and she loved it and she was like, well, that's really good and she learned about Open C, and then she created a little bit, uh, she, she created about half of this song in fact even maybe no sorry more than that um i'd say about two thirds and then i just came along and just put some little bits in it and then we created this and i just thought it was really really lovely and it's a song that i'm going to feature a lot in my forthcoming videos as well it's going to be like background music for the videos and i just thought why not share it with you and why not teach it to you as best as best i can <laughs> so last minute all right uh so um I'm just going to take that file away now. I hope you managed to get that. And as I said, the MP3 will be available at the end. It's great to have so many of you here. So last minute as well. Um, Ian and Malcolm, Ed. Uh, yeah, so it's really good. You can use that chat to uh, chat away. I may be turning the chat off depending on uh, things later uh, just to keep your attention on the lesson. But other than that, you can definitely use that. So let's get started. <clears throat> the tuning of the guitar normally. The strings are labelled E, A, D, G, B, E. OK, Eddie, A, Dynamite, Goodbye, Eddie. And what we need to do for this song, and if I reference the tab for you to show you this to, as a reminder, is we need to change the strings. We need to change four of the strings. So this, this thing here in Open C, this is telling us what to do with the strings. Now, if you're a bit confused about what this means, number six is your thickest string. Okay, so number five is the second thickest. So the strings would run down in order of six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so we are changing those four strings. And if we come back to uh, that tab, you'll see that we're changing s string six. Instead of E, we're going to change it to C. Now, to do that, I recommend initially, at least, using an electronic tuner, um, something on your phone or tablet or something like that. It does make things a lot easier. And without changing the tuning of your strings, you're not going to be able to play this song. So it is important that you learn how to do that. Now, little tip, if you are lucky enough to own more than one guitar, then my advice is have one guitar in your alternate tuning, be that open C or any other tuning that you're learning about, and the other guitar you keep in standard. If you do just have one guitar, you know, it's not the end of the world, but there is a lot of backwards and forwards with tuning because you put it in open C, you'll have a lot of fun with open C, and then you'll pick up a song that's in standard, as obviously many, many majority of songs are, and then you'll find, oh, I'm in open C and I've got a tune back. So if you do have two guitars, 
lucky you let me know in the chat if you do <laughs> um if you don't doesn't matter just tune it down but don't forget afterwards to learn how to tune it back into regular tuning um so taking that thickest string we need to loosen it down to the note of c now quite simply using your electronic tuner to do that you just strike the string and loosen just keep loosening the string until your electronic tuner says the note of C. Now, depending on the tuner you have, you may need to change the mode of tuning. I recommend the tuner I use is this, which is Boss's tuner. It's available on all platforms. And what the Boss tuner does is it just listens for any notes it can find. But there's certain tuners that will listen for, oh, you're tuning the thickest string. I want you that to be E because that's normally what it is. So you need a tuner. And this is an important word to understand. You need a chromatic tuner. Chromatic essentially means that the thing that you're using is going to tune it to any note that it hears. OK, whereas if it's a non-chromatic tuner, it's going to think, right, you're trying to tune the thickest string to E. And it, all it will do is say, well, you're nowhere near E, tighten it up, tighten it up. OK, so make sure you have a chromatic tuner to do this. So take your thickest string down to E. Little uh, reminder of what this is. This is Boss's uh, tuning app. I, I think it is free, actually. So this is the one that I recommend. It's actually based on a pedal. Um, that you use with electric guitar a lot of the time. So drop your thickest string down to C. Okay. The next string down, you so the string, the sound goes down. You don't want it to do the opposite, which is going up. You want it to go down and keep loosening it until you get to G, once again, using your tuner to do so. There is ways of doing it by ear, but to be honest with you, the thickest strings, it's kind of harder to hear that. I'm not saying it's, you know, you can do it, of course you can, um, but when you're a beginner-ish, which is kind of the level I'm targeting as that, the electronic tuner is the best way to go. The next string is the D string, which we need to tune down also to C. So we're just going to loosen that down until we get C. So a little recap so far on the first three strings. They are not in our regular tuning. The thickest string that's normally E has gone down to C. The A string has gone down. Loosened is another term. Going down is just loosening the string. It's under less tension. Down to G. And the D, D string has gone down also to C. You've got that, right? Next, the G string stays as it is, but you might as well have a little fine tune just to check that it is in G. The next string, the B string. This is where you can be a little nervy with your tuning because this alternate tuning, unlike many others, which usually involves a lot of loosening, this one, you have to tighten the string. So you're going to be turning it the opposite way to what you were doing before, and we're gonna be tightening it up to C. Now do this slowly. Your guitar can take it, and the string should be able to take it, and put it up to C. You're not going very far. It's just a half step, we call it in music theory. It's not far at all. And finally, your E string, you keep the same. So have you got that? Have you learned how to tune your instrument down to open C? Let me know in the chat. So if you have done that correctly, when you strum all six strings with your thumb, you'll get a sound you've probably never heard before if you've never done open C. Now, that, strumming all the strings without touching anything, is a C chord. It's a C chord. It's not a C chord that you would have heard before, but, and if you were to make a C in this tuning, you're in for a surprise. It sounds dreadful, right? Because the strings are moved. But this is called open C tuning because when you strum all the strings open, you get a C chord, okay? 
clever, right? <laughs> so it would have saved a lot of hassle as a beginner having to learn a C chord if you could just tune all the strings to an open C. Okay? <laughs> so that should be uh, in your open C. Ian's asked Drew, you'll be covering more intermediate level. Um, if you play the song faster, Ian, once you get the hang of it, I do think it is a bit more of an intermediate workout at that point, all right? So, there's your open C, and your guitar should sound like nothing you've ever heard before. Open C chord. Interestingly, if you were to bar all the strings, press them all down, you get other major chords. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F. So it's a good way of being able to play open chords by just learning all the chord shapes. And she said it hurt her fingers and she found it too difficult to learn all the chord shapes. So she decided to drop her guitar to an open C chord or open whatever she wanted to sing in, because you can do open D, open G. Um, and instead, she just moved a bar chord around and learned two or three shapes um, on her fingers. And then that's how she came to be with her guitar style, right? So <laughs> I always like that story because it's nice to hear su such a successful artist saying, look, you know, the guitar was difficult for me, so I found a, I did it this way, all right? I think that's really cool. So it's a nice sound, right, when you get it right. Um, I'll just um, run each string note again one more time because someone's just mentioned it in the chat and then we will move into um, how to play the song. So the thickest string you're taking down to C, the A string you're taking down to G, the D string you're taking down to C, the G you leave, same, B you're taking up to C and the E you leave. Okay, now that gives us the open tuning. Have a bit of fun with it, have a little play, even if you're just picking open strings. You'll get a very pleasant sound indeed. I'm just going to do a tiny bit of fine tuning, just bear with me. You may find that you need to fine tune because your strings are so used to being set in standard tuning, so they'll push and pull a little bit. But today it's cold in this room and my guitar is tight the strings. Okay, good. So we're going to learn the first four bars of this song. I'm going to break it down as sort of reasonably patiently as I can. Let me know in the chat how we go. Um, and um, let's have a look at the tab. So here we go with the tab. We're going to be learning these first four bars here, which incidentally, these little dots here, either side of the music, and if you can see that, um, they mean you repeat those four bars. We're then going to learn this section here, which is similar to the section above, but with a little bit more twiddly bits and does take the skill level up a touch further. And then we're going to be into this sort of mid section. Um, once you get the hang of the song and you can play it well, then do aim to play it at this speed here, which is 108 BPM, uh, which I think sounds absolutely fantastic. So let's learn that part at the beginning. Uh, okay, <laughs> so we're starting with there's a there's a there's a chord shape that once you crack it, the song is actually quite simple. So it's third fret on the thinnest string with your index finger, and fourth fret on the G string with your middle finger. They're the suggested fingers I use. What we're doing is we're going to pick that, and then we're going to move that chord shape down. Don't lift up off the strings as you go. <laughs> then move that chord down to fret one and two and do the same picking pattern. Pinch with the D string and the ring on the thinnest. Okay, no 
nice, right? If you've got your guitar perfectly in tune, that will sound really good. Good. The next chord, if you just think an A7 chord, if you know that chord really well, basically it's the B string on the second fret and it's the D string on the second fret. That's, that's what you're holding down. You're gonna make that chord moving into bar three. And then you're pinching this time the A string. Middle, thumb, middle, thumb, thumb on D, index. And that gives you the first half of the bar, um, which we are now at this section here, okay? So this is that first chord shape, this is the next part. And then you'll see that you've got a couple of little sort of loops with H's going over them. So what these mean are that you are picking the open B string and you're hammering the string. So you're slapping the string into the fretboard with your ring finger, preferably. And you do the same on the thinnest string. You play it zero open and hammer to fret one. So you've got that bar as, okay. So really hit hard. And if you're doing it correctly, the note should ring. If you're doing this, you're not hitting hard enough. So hit hard. And the last part of the bar is you go back to this one and three that we had in bar two, pick it, pinch, and then you strum the bottom four strings. Okay, so to put together the first line of the song, then repeat that. Okay, good so far, right? Um, good so far. So, did you get that? <laughs> have you picked that up? Have you, have you got the tune halfway there? I hope you're playing it now and you're enjoying it and getting as much enjoyment as Isabel and I did when we wrote it. So, you know, I hope you're enjoying that and that you you like the sound of it. OK, uh, Lizzie said hammer with index on second hammer with index on second hammer. Um, yeah, definitely, Lizzie. The only reason I'm suggesting hammering the first hammer on with ring is because the ring fingers there anyway from the previous part. And then, yeah, index because index sitting there. Okay. And the last part is a strum with the thumb on the bottom four strings. Okay. Lovely, right? So we're going to move down to the next line. Now, the first thing to understand about the next line is that you've done much of the groundwork in the previous four bars. Okay. So the previous four bars, it's very similar, but there's just a little bit more twiddly bits. Technical term. Let's look at what these new bars are and how, how to play them. Okay. So I will uh, turn that off and we will do the same as normal for the first half of the bar. So that's pinching the D and E, then middle on B, index on the four, and then middle. And we pinch again. Now with our little finger, play fret five on the thinnest string, but don't lift up this. Leave that there. Just put the little finger down. This will then cancel out the index. So we go fifth fret with the pinky, then let go with the pinky. And we just play that ring string, the, the ring finger three times. So we go three, five, three, then open on the B. And leave the chord shape there. Okay, move that down to fret one and two, like we did earlier, 
and do exactly the same idea with those fingers. So you pick as normal, pinch, middle, index, middle. This time we're going one, three with pinky, one, back to index, open B. So we've got three, five, three, open B. One, three, one, open B. And then back to the same thing as normal, the A7. Pick hammer, pick hammer. Very good. Okay. If anybody does, uh, you know, if, if Brian's just saying he's off, that's, this is going to be recorded, so you will be able to catch up on it. All right, Brian, thanks for stopping by, though. I appreciate joining us live. Okay. I think the majority of people will be catching up on this one because I was very last minute. Normally when I do these things, I give loads and loads of notice, but I just, I don't know inspiration struck and I just wanted to do it. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll play, um, I'll play the first two lines of the song. Bear in mind, each line is repeated, okay? I'm gonna play at slowish tempo. Feel free to play along with me if you're feeling confident already. After and a four, three and four and. <laughs> I would say that if you can play the first four bars, that's the beginner's entry. Uh, I think that, that if you can do those, terrific. If you can do the next section, then you're taking yourself a little further. So give yourself a pat on the back for that because that's a little bit harder because you have to keep a call. Let me know. It's, um, I think that in itself is lovely. We're going to be learning this little midsection in a moment. Uh, and I'll be showing you what, what we do with that. Incidentally, this chord thing that we've got, this one and three on the end, you can slide this around. Sounds great on fret eight with all the strings. Same with this A7 chord. You can slide them around the neck. And they do sound really nice. So you could get quite creative with your own open C. The best thing about using open C, especially in finger style, is that if you get into any trouble and you're thinking, well, this isn't quite working out, just play open strings because they sound great because the song you're writing is inevitably in C. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> we'll have a look at the next section now. So the next section, um, I mean, you've already done over half the song, so well done on that. So we're now going to be looking at this thing here. Now, not as complicated as it looks, I don't think. First of all, it's the same repeated idea. So when you get to this here, this is the same as that. And this is the same as the bar before. <clears throat> the only thing that is a little different is this little join here in bar 16, which we will have a look at. And then I'll talk about how to complete the song and what this sort of del signo means and, and all this little bit at the end, okay? Just to give us an ending to the tune. All right, great. So <clears throat> the next section is this fifth fret on the A string and the G string. So use your middle and ring finger. I think they're the best use. In fact, I, you definitely need to use them because later on you are going to be using the index finger, okay? The picking pattern, you're pinching the two strings that you're holding down with thumb and index. Then you move your thumb down to the open D, which is actually a C. Then middle finger plays the open B string. Then index. And 
move that chord shape down once again to fret three. That's the beauty of this. Try not to lift up off the strings as you go. Do the same picking pattern. So you've got. Then move down to fret two. Do the same picking pattern. Three, two. Open on A. Hammer. A to on fret two. Pick three. Pick two. So we've got third fret, second fret. Repeat. Okay. The probably the biggest challenge you'll find is going, getting back up to fret five. My advice for that is look at fret five while you're playing the da 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 da. Okay, get used to that part. I do like that part. And then once you've done that bit, as we just have, it's the same thing again, but this time. We're going to have come with our fives, but our index finger is going to play fret four on the B. So we're going to be making this chord shape, do the same picking pattern. Then move that down to fret three. Good. Well done. OK, so essentially uh, coming back to the music, I do think it's good to reference the music as we go to stop. So, so this is our, these two bars are the same as these two bars. And then when we get to these, this is where the fourth fret starts to come in. It goes four, two, open, then da, 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 there. And then when we go to do that bit again for the second time, at the end, instead of going, we strum, this chord which is our a7 chord i know it says g5 above it's a bit confusing but that's the tab editor um and the the open tuning just strum it with your thumb ah roy i'm sorry you didn't get to see how to do the open tuning uh this will be available on catch up i did do uh, a detailed five ten minutes at the beginning about how to do that okay but thanks for stopping by um <clears throat> so when you do this strum here this strum, we've then got the da 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 da. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play that for you so that you can hear what that sounds like because I think that'll make a bit more sense. So, this is the time when we're doing the fives with the index down. Do it again. Strum, then we just do that little hammer on lick that we had in, at the beginning. Pick hammer, pick hammer, back to this bit. Okay, so once again, I'll show you one last time a little bit about music theory and the reading of it here. So you go, this is your strum, and then this is da 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 da. Now, designo means you go to the sign. So you're going to go back to the sign, which is this thing here, and play through the beginning with all the repeats if you choose to. Okay, I find it quite a relaxing song, so I like the repetition in it. I think it sounds really nice. Also, repetition is good because if you're repeating something that sounds nice, it's easier to memorize it and pick it up so you're not having to look at the music, which should be your overall goal one day. Um, so then what happens when you play through for the final time? Well, when you play through it the second time, you get to this bar here. <laughs> skip out 17 and instead you go to 18 and that gives you your ending now in that ending i'm going pick hammer pick hammer strumming the one and two that we had the second chord in the song twice then letting go of everything and strumming the lock to get that deep full-bodied c chord at the end okay and that is the sun has no judgment and that is the song uh and that is a lot of fun so i think what i'll do is i'll play the whole thing for you live and then i'll make the mp3 available so that you can download it and, and grab it um and then yeah very good so i'm going to play the whole thing i'm going to play it medium tempo okay here we go three and four and <laughs> Thank you. 
could do the whole thing around. This would be the last time. A little raggedy around the edges, but there we go. That is the whole song. Um, so this was taught in open tuning. If you do like open tuning and the adventure that it brings with guitar playing and such beautiful songs, um, I do teach open tuning in Beyond Fingerstyle Freedom, um, which is a course I wrote for slightly more intermediate fingerstyle players. Um, it's off the back of very successful fingerstyle free, um, which uh, some of you may have taken. Um, and you can get that course next weekend when I'll be releasing it just for a little 24 hour period. So you can grab it. This song doesn't feature in that course. This song just came out of nowhere and I wanted to teach it. But if you do like this and you do like the sort of alternate tuning and the finger style and the way I'm teaching it, obviously, then um, so I really hope you enjoy it. Uh, that was the biggest reason for sharing it. Um, I'm going to share this link with you so you can download the MP3. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the webinar. It has been a blast. So let's put that in there. And if you click on that, that'll take you to um, that'll take you to WeTransfer and you can then download the MP3 that I recorded there. All right. So I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I can see Lizzie said she's hooked on it. Roy likes it very catchy. Ed saying beautiful music. Uh, and Alan saying you can never have too many guitars. Jilly. Yeah, I thought it would be up your street, Jilly. So I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. <laughs> um, okay. Very good. Very good. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. So I'm going to wrap up there. Thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, it's It's been fun. It's been a blast. It's nice to do something public um, for <clears throat> everyone on the mailing list. Um, normally, I do events like this uh, for premium members, but it's nice to kind of just do something uh, for everybody. Um, so uh, thank you. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. And I shall see you again soon.